welcome to World News Program, streaming to you live from the capital, Algiers on All24 News. And up next are the top stories. 17 Palestinian martyrs reported in the ongoing largest Zionist aggression on the West Bank. Siege continues on Jenin and Tolkarem and North Shem's camps. Hamas warns of imminent explosion in the West Bank due to occupation crimes and settler terrorism. Guterres calls for immediate halt to Zionist aggression and EU begins consultations on sanctions against occupation ministers. Also coming up in the latest developments on the ground in Gaza Strip, 68 Palestinian martyrs in four massacres by occupation forces within 24 hours. And following Algeria's initiative, UN Security Council urged all Libyan parties to avoid actions deepening divisions. Libyan Presidential Council accepts participation in the UN-facilitated national dialogue. More details after the break. Again and welcome to the program. First in our top stories, at least 17 Palestinians were killed and over injured and dozens arrested in occupation raid today in the northern occupied West Bank. Medical sources reported eight deaths in Jenin, five in Tolkarem and four in Tobas, raising the death toll in the West Bank since the war against Gaza began to 669. Occupation forces continue their raids in Jenin and Tolkarem, the most extensive since 2002 while withdrawing from Tobas. Engine and occupation forces continue to besiege the city, the city, storm the eastern neighborhood and deploy reinforcements around the camp amid clashes and explosions, according to local sources. The governor stated that roads are closed, property, property destroyed and infrastructure damaged. The hospital director confirmed Zionist forces remain at their the entrances with power and water still cut off. In Tolkaram, Zionist forces expanded their assault to, to include its camp and continue to besiege Norsham's camp, blocking all entrances and raiding homes. Dozens of Palestinians have been arrested in Tolkaram and its camps, with others subjected to field interrogations. In Tobas, occupation forces withdrew from Al Farah camp after 30 hours raid that left four dead, several arrested, and caused widespread destruction to homes and infrastructure. The head of the Farah Camp Services Committee reported that the damage from this raid was more extensive than the previous incursions. Residents of Al Farah camp in Tobas in the occupied West Bank on Thursday held a funeral for four Palestinians killed during a Zionist raid on Wednesday. The funeral procession moved through the streets before burial in the camp cemetery, with thousands of Palestinians participating in raising flags and chanting against ongoing Zionist violations and crimes. Early today, Mohammed Jabber, commander of the Tolkarm Battalion of Al Quds Brigades, was killed in clashes around a house surrounded by occupation forces in Norsham's camp. The Tolkarm Battalion of the Bri Quds Brigades, I'm saying, announced that they ambushed a Zionist infantry unit in the Menshia area as an initial response to the killing of their leader, Mohammed Jabber, known as Abu Shuja. Meanwhile, the joint battalion reported fierce clashes with Zionist forces, reporting direct hits on their targets.
Hamas stated the ongoing occupation crimes and arrogance will ignite a widespread anger in the West Bank. In a Thursday statement, Hamas vowed to inflict further losses and setbacks on occupying Israel due to its relentless military aggression, which they believe will turn the land into a blaze beneath the feet of its forces and settlers. We support the resistant members of the Qassam Brigade and all the military branches who sacrificed themselves to confront this aggression and face its incursions and barbaric assaults through direct confrontations with the occupation forces and the targeting of its vehicles with explosive devices. We are in front of the escalation of the occupation and its aggression on the West Bank governates to confirm that the occupation awaits more losses and disappointments, the deepening of its crisis and its security panic extending from Gaza to the West Bank. And all the fields involved in the Battle of Aqsa Flood, the offensives of the heroic resistant members will destroy its positions and will target its elements. Khalid Mash'al, head of Hamas abroad, has called for a return to suicide operations to resist Zionist forces' actions in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. He emphasized the need to escalate the conflict against the Zionist entity and push beyond all limits. At an annual conference for the report Ayun al-Aqsa, Mash'al condemned the recent Zionists and American narratives as, more fabrication, as mere fabrications and lies. Resistance operations in the West Bank are escalating despite the harsh conditions. We want to return to suicide operations. This is a situation for which only open conflict is suitable. They are fighting us in an open conflict, and we are confronting them in an open conflict. I repeat my call to everyone to participate in multiple fronts in the actual resistance against the Zionist entity. America abandoned the July 2 proposal and then puts the blame on Hamas, knowing that the one who blocked the agreement was Benjamin Netanyahu, who has a personal agenda. In addition to the Zionist agenda that is supported by America and some Western countries, unfortunately. Occupation forces have detained at least 25 Palestinians in the West Bank since last night, including former prisoners, raising the total to 45 since the recent military operation began. The Palestinian prisoners group reports that over 10,300 Palestinians, including those from Al-Quds, have been arrested since the start of the ongoing aggression. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the Zionist aggression in the occupied West Bank. His spokesperson Stefan de Jarik expressed deep concern over the recent developments and strongly condemned the loss of life. He called for occupying Israel to adhere to its obligations, take measures to protect civilians and immediately halt the aggression in the West Bank. EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell announced that the EU is initiating sanctions against some Zionist occupation ministers. Borrell criticized these ministers for promoting unacceptable hate messages against Palestinians and endorsing ideas that contradict international law. He did not specify which ministers would face sanctions. Initiated the procedures in order to ask the but certainly I initiated the procedures in order to ask the member states if they want, if they consider appropriate, including in our list of sanctions, some Israeli ministers has been uh, launching hate messages, unacceptable hate messages against the Palestinians and proposing things that goes clearly against international law and is an incitation to commit war crimes. We move on to Gaza Strip now. Occupation forces have committed four new massacres in Gaza, resulting in 68 martyrs and 77 wounded in, within 24 hours. On Thursday, the Palestinian Ministry of Health reported that the toll from the ongoing Zionist assault on Gaza has risen to 40,602 martyrs and 93,855 injured with tens of thousands are still missing and trapped under rubble.
Hamas condemned Netanyahu's proposal to designate vaccination sites in the Strip does not constitute approval for or of a humanitarian ceasefire, but it is a blatant tactic to continue the slow killing of Gaza's children. Azad Rishk said this tactic could undermine the UN's efforts and block polio vaccinations for hundreds of thousands of children. With the UN confirming the first polio case in Gaza in nearly a quarter century, international calls have increased for accelerating, accelerating the vaccination campaign, which is hindered by ongoing Zionist bombardments and airstrikes across the region. Salman Asib has more. This Palestinian mother, Nivin Abuljidian, is sitting next to her baby boy, Abdurrahman Abuljidian, inside a modest tent amid the ruins of Gaza, wondering if her son will ever be able to walk again after being the first confirmed case of polio in 25 years in the Gaza Strip. I was shocked that my son got this disease amid the war and the closure of border crossings, under these conditions and lack of medicine for him. It's a shock. Would he remain like this? For how long? Is there a treatment for him? Is there someone to treat him? I don't know what to do. I took him to the hospital. They told me that my son has polio and they cannot treat him. They cannot do anything for him. The confirmation shocked the hopeless mother and increased her worries about the fate of her only baby boy after being deprived from traveling and receiving proper treatment. He's my only baby boy. It's his right to travel and be treated. It's his right to walk, run and move like before. It's his right to get the proper treatment, travel, get out and get his chance in life. It is unfair that he stays thrown in the tent without care or attention. Ilian's mother, like other Gazans, is afraid that her 18-month-old daughter will be infected with polio. She is suffering from health complications. My daughter's condition was good. She used to sit and crawl. She was doing well. We came here and then the girl became malnourished due to the situation that we are in. My daughter has gone through problems due to malnourishment. She has dehydration and the dehydration has caused problems for her. According to the World Health Organization, senior official in the Palestinian territories, Rick Peppercorn, said during UN noon briefing in a video call with the UN spokesperson Stefan Dujarek that the vaccination campaign of some 640,000 children against polio in the Gaza Strip is due to start on Sunday, adding that the UN is ready to cooperate with international organizations to secure this campaign serving and protecting more than 650,000 Palestinian children in the Gaza Strip. An entity announced the death of 15 of its soldiers, including a sergeant in Gaza Strip, during the month of August. This brings the total number of Zionist occupation forces casualties since October 7th to 704. to regional developments now. Lebanon's Hezbollah said they have launched a drone attack on a Zionist occupation military base in the occupied Golan Heights. Hezbollah stated it targeted the headquarters of the Golan Division 210 at the Nafa base, causing direct hits on occupation forces. To Algeria, construction has begun on the Algerian Qatari German Hospital in Sidi Abdullah in Algiers. The finance minister noted that the 100,000 square meter facility with 300 beds will offer advanced medical services. He emphasized that the project reflects the commitment of the highest authorities in both countries to enhance health care in Algeria.
Mohammed bin Badr Sada, CEO of Qatar's investment holding group, announced that the hospital will be operational by 2026. He described the project as a significant step that will broaden investment opportunities in Algeria. Stick around for the latest updates on the presidential election campaigns in Algeria after this short break. Presidential candidate Youssef Oshish stated that if elected, he will reassess diplomatic relations with France and Western countries. He plans to establish new relations based on equality, reciprocity and mutual respect. Oshish speaking on Algerian speaking to Algerian International TV, All24 News, during a campaign event in Batna, emphasized that he will not accept relationships with countries that view Algeria with a colonial mindset or seek to impose control. في حال انتخابنا من بين الإجراءات الأولى التي سوف نتخذها هي إعادة تقييم if I am elected, one of the first measures I will take is to review our relations with Western countries, especially with France, in order to establish relations based on reciprocity, equal treatment and mutual respect. We will never accept that countries treat us from a colonialist or protectorate perspective. We have sovereignty and we snatched our sovereignty with enormous sacrifices of millions of martyrs who sacrificed themselves and their dearest things to achieve national independence. Therefore, we are committed to re-establishing our foreign relations on this basis, equal treatment and reciprocity. And we will also promote our relations with our African partners, with all countries and peoples with whom we share the same aspiration and hopes. In terms of foreign policy, if I become president of the Republic, I will strongly adhere to the process of contributing in the emergence of the new world order, a multipolar order, which is fairer and more equitable for marginalized and oppressed peoples. We have the capacity to impose our strength as a country and as a freedom-loving peoples. Of course, if I become president of the republic, I will continue to adhere to my diplomatic doctrine based on non-alignment and the promotion of new relations with emerging countries. Independent presidential candidate Abdel Majid Tabun urged strong participation in the upcoming elections, calling for renewed confidence in his leadership, as he believes continuity is essential. During a public rally in Janat, southern Algeria, Tabun pledged to have the government hold meetings in Janat to address local concerns, similar to those conducted in Khanshla, Tisimsilt, and Tindouf. He emphasized his commitment to supporting local youth in launching projects and boosting regional development. My presence with you today is a continuation of what we started in other provinces. We encourage each other to massively vote on September 7 to renew confidence in my humble person. Continuity is necessary because you know what happened during the first mandate. First, we suffered like all humanity, and we accepted it with open heart because it was a divine will. The COVID pandemic, 
which left our country for a year and a half, with factories closed, schools and universities closed, trying to save the lives that we could save. Tibun said that Niger, Mali and Libya are sister nations with Algeria serving as their support and defense, highlighted Algeria's proactive stance in defending Niger against threats, noting that Algeria was the first to respond. He revealed plans to open border crossings with Libya and Niger and establish free trade zones to facilitate the export of Algerian products to these countries. All our environment, the states around us, are friends and brothers. The state of Niger is a brotherly country. The state of Libya is a brotherly country. The state of Mali is a brotherly country. We help with what we can help, at least ensuring that no harm will come to them from us. The voice of Algeria has now become heard, and you have seen the strength of the voice of Algeria within the UN Security Council. Algeria defends Palestine and Western Sahara. As soon as there was a threat to the brotherly state of Niger to attack it, the first country to intercept them was Algeria. And we remain firm in our position in defending the brotherly state of Niger. Our relations will remain fraternal, as they have been since independence. For his part, the candidate of the Movement of Society for Peace Party, Abdelali Hassan Sharif, held a rally on Thursday in the province of Watsuf in eastern Algeria during which he affirmed the role of his program to, is to defend the security and economic interests of the country. Hassan Sharif stressed that his program allows Algeria to continue to defend just causes throughout the world, such as the Palestinian and Sahrawi causes, highlighting the economic and agricultural contributions of the province. Our participation and our role in this election is a fundamental and crucial role linked to the security and stability of the country and its unity and the defense of our country against all foreign schemes, a role that allows our country to remain in the axis of resistance and the defense of Palestine, the defense of the causes, the defense of the Sahrawi cause, the defense of our brothers and the defense of peace and the defense of peace and security on the African continent. A role that allows us to stop illegal immigration, human trafficking, arms and drug trafficking to protect our country from scourges through which the Western world wants to turn this region into a conflict zone and divert us from our unity and our economic development. Brothers, this is our opportunity program that I invite you to support, and I am sure that you all are with this program. Dear brothers and sisters, you must know that the upcoming presidential election is a crucial and decisive election. Which constitutes an opportunity to implement the country's development programs. The province of Wadsouf is part and parcel of this country and contributes to Algeria's national security because it is a province that contributes to economic, agricultural, scientific, commercial and industrial development. To a different matter now, UN Security Council members voice concern over the situation in Libya, ur urging all parties to avoid actions that could worsen divisions. The statement initiated by, Alger by Algeria and the UK called for a 
a peaceful resolution to the Libyan Central Bank crisis and discouraged the use of force or economic pressure. The Libyan Presidential Council accepted the UN's invitation for a national dialogue on the central bank issue, emphasizing its commitment to national unity. Mohamed al-Manfi also welcomed the UN Security Council statement and urged Speaker Aguila Saleh to reconsider the suspension of the political agreement and its repercussions. That's the end of our news program for tonight. For more updates, you can always check our social media platforms. Thank you for tuning in. Till next time, take care.